I'm Jancy Despain with Bright Idea Tutoring. This is video number four in a six-part series on algal condensation. In this short video, I'll show you how to recognize intramolecular algal condensations and how to predict products. If this is helpful to you, don't forget to like and subscribe. This reaction is a little intimidating the first time you see it. This is an intramolecular aldol condensation. And we know it's going to be intramolecular, which means the reaction occurs within a molecule, because there are two ketone or aldehyde functional groups in the same molecule. And when you see one of these, you don't panic. You follow the exact same steps that you already know. So our first job is to decide which alpha carbon is going to be deprotonated. We just have two alpha carbons that we have to identify. There's one right here, and there's one right here. So we need to think about which one is a better alpha carbon, but they're both identical. So it really doesn't matter which one becomes the alpha carbon that's going to be the enolate. We just randomly pick one. So I'll just pick this one, and I'm going to draw it as the enolate. I'm going to give it an electron pair and a negative charge. And I'm going to draw a bond between this alpha carbon and the other carbonyl. And that's going to look just like this. And then I'm going to push these electrons up onto the O. So again, I follow these exact same rules. It just looks a little different. Now I need to redraw this. And when I do that, I can make it look a little prettier. I've still got this six-membered ring. And then when I redraw this, I can say, hey, this is a one, two, three, four, five membered ring. And we know how to draw five membered rings that look better than that. So there we go. That's a prettier five membered ring. On this corner, we've got this aldehyde group coming off. On this corner, we've now got an H, and this is now an O minus. And then on this corner, we've got nothing. And our final step is to protonate this O. So that is our final aldol product. And we can go through our normal steps to confirm that it's correct. O, 1, 2, 3, O. And again, we know we've got a, a good product. Here's another example of an intramolecular aldol. And here, we have to think a little bit harder about our first step. Because Again, our first step is to decide which carbon is going to be the alpha. We can choose one of these, which are identical, or one of these, which are identical. And here we have a methoxide base, which indicates we would choose a more substituted alpha carbon, one of these interior ones rather than the exterior ones. But when you have an intramolecular aldol, you're going to form a ring structure. And you need to think about what size that ring structure is going to make. Is it going to make a three or four membered ring? Is it going to make a five or six or seven membered ring? Because thermodynamically, it really matters for the success of the reaction, what size ring we're going to make. Two, three, and four membered rings are thermodynamically very unfavorable. And in fact, these reactions prefer five and seven membered rings. And six is okay. And of course, larger rings are okay too, but five and seven are preferred. So, if we followed our original rule that this type of base is going to choose one of these more substituted alpha carbons, and we, let's say, made this one our alpha carbon of the enolate, and we let it attack right here, how many members is this ring going to have? One, two, three, four. A four-membered ring. That's not okay, especially when we have other options available. We can let one of these carbons become the alpha carbon of our enolate. When we choose this carbon to be the alpha carbon of our enolate and let it attack our carbonyl, now we have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six members in our ring. And that reaction is going to be much more favorable and it's going to give us the majority of our product. So this is the alpha carbon that we need to choose. Why don't you try to predict the product of this reaction and let's see how you do. This is our reaction product. 
Again, you can see that we have a carbonyl, an OH, and O123O. So hopefully your product has those features. If you want to know how I specifically got to this uh, reaction product, when I made this connection, I created a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring. So I can draw a six membered ring and I can create a numbering system. One, two, three, four, five, six for the members of the ring. And I can make the same system here. And I can say carbon one now has an OH and a methyl. Carbon two, three, and four are clean. Carbon five has a carbonyl and carbon six is now connected to carbon one.